Hi everyone, so welcome to Investing with Value. So today I want to look at Palantir Technologies because they just released their third quarter results. Share price is $14.58 and the aftermarket price is $13.50. Uh, this share price has gone up so much in the past month from about $9.30 to close to $16. So they've, they've had a really impressive return if you're an early investor in this company. Uh, that you know given the current drop um, you would think something bad happened so if we look at the uh, quarter two guidance uh, result and then they gave a quarter three guidance um, they, they were expecting 42 percent revenue growth and this was represented this would be about 278 to 280 uh, for the third quarter which they were thinking they would get 46 or 47 percent growth uh, but if we look at the actual result, they actually got 52% for the third quarter, which is really impressive, particularly since this co uh, company is contract based, most of the uh, revenues expected, they already know about because a lot, a lot of, you know, they're looking at these large, large contracts. So it's not something that you just pop on your website, consumer buys it, and all of a sudden, oh, you expected more revenue. No, these are all, all contracts. They're all very long term contracts. So for a company that probably would have seen and expected uh, um, their revenues, it's actually a really, really big surprise on their side that they actually got even more than that. It shows how strong uh, their current uh, offering is and a lot of people are signing up, a lot of companies um, and also governments. So new contracts of US Army and National Institute of Health so and also the aerospace uh, contract being renewed with 300 million so it kind of just shows you the depth of this company's software that it can be used for the army it can be used for health it can be used for aerospace um, so yeah like you, you're looking at a company that's n not really limited by you know what it's creating it's limited by the person using it uh, which their revenue um, was 289 million um, so originally they were expecting max 280 for the guidance and to get 289, 9.4 million more. Um, that's pretty incredible. That's really incredible. To be fair, that's two two more contracts than they expected. Or well, not two more contracts. It's four more contracts if we break it down. Um, because get their average contract value was about 5.8 million, and that was up from I think 4.2. Um, they do say this some, somewhere. Um, so yeah, it's a really good result and they incurred a loss of 847 million uh, which 847 million was stock based compensation. So literally this, this company broke even uh, based if we take out the stock based compensation which is a non-cash expense. Um, though you could argue that if you're not giving away st stock based compensation you would probably have to pay these people in real you know cold hard cash right so we would have to see what uh, situation that would be because particularly for a private company you do uh, issue a lot of stock for keeping people in the company but the minute you become a public company you start issuing a lot less stock and giving out a lot more cash um, so we would probably still expect uh, a loss just to make up um, for the stock based compensation in the future uh, but they're doing really well like in September uh, they were selected among a 999 bid for a two year contract which is like an, Im an insane amount of bids imagine you're the person going through these bids <laughs> that's a lot of work right um, so also yeah as I mentioned uh, they have aerospace contract for 300 million was for five years well over five years so it's not worth 300 million per year it's worth 300 million over that th uh, five years um, representing the contract value um, also they have an oil and gas customer so again this company is limited to uh, the use of their software so there is unlimited expectations where you, uh, of what you can use for this um, and then they're, expa they're expanded abroad, including Japan, which is always a good sign. Um, yeah, so again, they're expanding more or less to the wider Asia region, having uh, built a lot of operations in North America, Europe and Middle East, and also increasingly in South America. So that was also a really good 
uh, situation that this company is not limited by um, the region they're operating in though they did say they were going to be more US focused and they do not want to sell to anyone that can be seen as having a conflict of interest to the US um, and they've given a fourth quarter guidance as well so for the fourth quarter they expect revenue of 299 to 301 million uh, given their con the, the, the amount of revenue they do is very contract based um, yeah it would be an increase on the current situation uh, though based on the past year it would just be a 30 to 31 percent increase rather than the 52 percent that they've actually gotten this quarter so next quarter the result of growth is much less um, but I mean this is based on a comparison of last quarter whereas if we were to compare next quarter 299 to the current quarter 2 where they generate 289 million um, it is an increase on that which is also a really good result um, so and then they expect for 2021 will be over 30 percent growth uh, which will be a great outlook particularly since this company is on the cusp of uh, making profit particularly if we consider that if we take out the stock based compensation then this company would be a profitable company um, so if we see loss before well loss net loss is 853 million um, and as they put here stock based compensation is 846 million as you can see by these little ones here anything with this little one here is a note to say a, a decent chunk of it was stock based compensation as you can see several several hundred of millions of stock based compensation uh, cash reserves look decent 1.8 mil uh, billion up from 1 billion a year ago so this company um, is in good hands now that it's breaking even um, I don't think they would have to raise any more cash uh, yeah, especially not given the current circumstances but you know we never know uh, so if we look at this loss here, they've actually taken the liberty of adding back these numbers. Um, so 846 million in stock-based compensation, 20 million um, in employer payroll tax-related stock-based compensation, and also di di direct listing costs 53 million in related costs, which is quite a lot for a listing. Uh, if we take those away, uh, they would actually be positive 73 million, which is incredible, right? If if we took everything else they would actually be in a positive situation um, and also if you note that for a company of their caliber uh, of course they do have to continue to spend money on research and development but if we look at research and development uh, it was 256 whereas their overall cost was 313 so again uh, they could easily reduce this cost um, and increase their bottom line if they wanted to but there's no point the, the competitive advantage is staying ahead of technology of course uh, but overall if you take away those um, expenses that are in a sense non-cash or n not related to normal operations they did very well getting 73 million um, yeah so let me know what your thoughts are on this company did this company perform as expected or were you disappointed because obviously the market is selling and uh, I don't think it's through disappointment I think it's just through boredom uh, through profit taking given how much the share price has risen over time um, but yeah I think overall it's a good result and until then good luck investing everyone